Hey, welcome back. I'm Fina, and today I thought that we could do a little bit more painting. So, as you can see, I've got a little canvas here, and I've actually got a second one that I want to do as well. So these are actually commission paintings, and they came from a person who has bought a painting from me before of their little dog running through a field, which was very cute. And they thought it would be nice if they could get two more paintings of their other two dogs, you know, also running through a field. <laughs> so then they'll have a little set of all three of them. I think that's such a sweet idea. So we're going to do those today. And these might be a bit more difficult because they've just sent me a few pictures of the dogs and a picture of the original painting and just sort of gone, just stick them in there. <laughs> so we'll see if I can do it. I'll do my best. I've got some reference photos here on my computer. And other than that, I think we're ready to go. So as you can see, I've already drawn the little dogs on there. But it's very basic, and you know, most of the work will be done with the paint afterwards. So, they wanted acrylic paint. So I'm going to just grab a few colours and put them on. <laughs> Palette is a strong word for this. I, for acrylic paint, I've just been using this, um, I don't even know what this is, it's just a piece of plastic can't remember where it came from, but I do have a proper palette, which actually is right here, but I use it for my oil paints, so this is my, my oil paint palette, which looks, I know it's also messy, don't judge me, but you know, it looks more like a traditional palette, but this is the acrylic one we're going to be using definitely out of the two not my favorite I would rather do oil paint but alas it is cheaper so <laughs> if people want to buy acrylic paintings it's very understandable so let's begin with the colors for the background which is just a grassy field with some nice little flowers in it so I'm gonna start with green just splodge that right here on my Palette. Actually, I feel like I'm going to need loads, so I'm going to be quite generous for that. Then I'm going to use a paler green as well. Some yellow, just for the warmer tones. Some black. Now, each of the meadows are going to have different flowers in them. The original has these yellow flowers at the back and then some pink flowers in the foreground. I've got some inspiration pictures and I'm going to change them up for each of the paintings. So, let's get some white. Oh, okay. might be enough for now. So I'm just going to be doing the background and then I'll paint the dog and put some bits over the top afterwards. And then the flowers might put in after as well. Let's see. Let's just do the dogs, uh, the grass for now. So in the original one, it's sort of forest here and you see the top of the meadow there. So I think I'll try and do the same thing again. Let's start by mixing up some colours, and I'm going to use the little one first because I'm going to do that little tree line at the top. Now in the original painting it's quite dark green, so let's try and do that again. Get some of this dark green colour and a bit of black, 
as well as a tiny bit of white just to sort of dull it out a bit so it's looking like that right now which I think is still a bit too green so let's put in some more black and white There we go. I feel like that's a little better. So I'll do the whole top of it in this colour first. I have a base to work on. And this way, and I also just make sure that there are no little white spots poking through and paint I can paint <laughs> it's always important to paint the edges as well just because some people don't frame these paintings and so it's nice to make sure that it has a finished look when you hang it up okay we have our dark green should also mention I have a jar of water ready to go here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sky poking through and some lighter coloured trees, but it doesn't need to be detailed at all really. So for the lighter trees I'm just gonna mix more white into this green that I had. Maybe a little more green because it's looking quite grey with all that white in it. And I'm really just going to sort of splatter. <laughs> this is not the focus of the painting after all, and I think actually in the original photo they sent me this part was literally out of focus. <laughs> so it's really just a sort of blur. I'll try and add a bit more dimension in a moment. This is just the groundwork. So now I'm going to take a little bit of black and mix that with my dark green again, just so it's not completely black. And I'd like to use that just to sort of create some kind of texture or depth amongst those trees, just because when it's just block colours, it doesn't quite look like enough, I think. And like, obviously it doesn't look like anything special, and that's fine. <laughs> as long as it doesn't look out of place, really. I just want to make it look like there's a bit of natural variation, you know. Okay, 
that's not too bad. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to paint them both sort of at the same time. So I'm going to do this one as well. Just because it's easier to do this while I have all the colours mixed already. And since it's acrylic paint, they dry quite fast. So we're going to do both paintings simultaneously. This one I'm actually starting with the light green colour, just because that's what's currently on my brush. quite fun because you can be really quite like rough with this which is also the benefit of acrylic paint which is just that you don't really have to worry too much about where you put stuff because if it's wrong you can just paint over it <laughs> it's quite easy to fix whereas with oil paint you know if you put a blob of paint in the wrong place you can sort of wash it off with white spirit, but if you don't manage to do that, then you know everything you put over the top of it is always going to blend into that colour and it will keep coming through, which can be kind of a pain. I don't want it to look too much like I'm just alternating dark and light because that doesn't look so natural but when I get that black in there I think it'll start to look a little better That's looking okay there now. So now what I'm going to do is put in a little bit of sky just to make it look a little more depth. In depth. You know what I mean. So I'm just going to mix some white pretty much. I don't think I really need any blue. I'm just going to do white. So I'm just going to use that white just to sort of dot in there. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I know I just did that, but I'm going to start on the older one because we've tried a tiny bit more already. I'm just going to sort of make an opening in the trees. Oh, that's still quite green. I 
Okay, so this is definitely not dry enough for that yet. <laughs> Let's wait a little. Let's do the rest of the grass first then. And then we'll do the white. So for the grass, I'm gonna just paint on a sort of base of green and then use a thin brush to make the blades. So let's mix the right green colour first. I'm gonna use some of this dark green and then a brighter, lighter green and some white. And a little black as well. Again, just because putting that grey tone in there makes it look a little more realistic. Because it's, you know, not many things are actually that vivid. So, I've got a colour like that. How's that? Is it a bit too, it's a bit too much, I think. I'm going to put in some white and a tiny bit of yellow. That's better, isn't it? still quite bright, but I think that's okay because the original painting is bright. So I'm going to go with that. And I'm just going to paint it all over, really. This line will be covered, you know, with the little grass blades and with some flowers in the end. So it's alright that it looks a bit messy right now. because that's part of it. And I'll just go around the shape of the dark. so quickly. Because I normally paint with oil paint, I usually use such a tiny amount of it and then a lot of like white spirit to thin it down. So I'm not used to using <laughs> such quantities of paint. Making sure again that I've filled in all these little white holes. You can see them a lot more easily when you hold them up against the light. Because sometimes they're quite small. It's not easy to spot. But then when you have a finished painting that's got these little white holes in them, it doesn't look very professional. So you do need to be careful. But of course. This layer doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to paint over the whole thing basically. This dog is actually such a cutie. Little peanut.
Right. One down. <laughs> Let's put that one on here to dry. Break. Put this thing's little hat on, so I'm hoping it's still going to be warm. <laughs> Tip it. This dog I'm a little more apprehensive about painting because the photo that they liked the most, they sent me a few, is one of the dog laying down looking up and has a little walnut on its head. It's very cute and they want the walnut in the picture so it's, walnut picture is the main one. But that photo crops sort of just under the head of the dog. So I'm going to have to improvise a little bit with the rest of the body. And they did send me some other photos of the dog, so I think I'll be able to do it. But I hope I do it justice. Because <laughs> the first dog at least was sort of like running towards the camera through the field which I feel like makes more sort of contextual sense. Whereas these are sort of just sitting there. But I'm going to try and make it look as natural as possible. <laughs> because the actual dog, the photo cuts off about here. But I'm going to try and sort of put in some legs. <laughs> or maybe I could just make it look like he's sitting behind really tall grass. We'll see. Okay, number two done. Now I'm going to have to actually start working on the little easel <laughs> because there's paint all over these. So I'm just going to put this one down while I work on this one. I don't know. For the grass, I think it would actually be easier to use a flat brush like this than a skinny one to make those blades of grass. But that might actually be the smallest one I have. I'm just still a bit thick. Otherwise, I have a little skinny brush I can use. Our original painting has a little bit of shadow under the actual dog, so that might be something that I should put in now. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black to that existing grass colour. And some dark green. And I sort of have to guess where the shadows would go because obviously I don't have these photos. I feel like it would sort of go under the face of the dog, because it's sort of sitting in this direction here, and outwards. And these shadows again it will be sort of blended out by the grass going over the top, so it's not so important that they look perfect now. I reckon we give it something like that. <laughs> it's not so bad, is it? And then for this little guy, maybe just sort of directly below.
too. Perfect. Shall we just branch it out a bit? Yeah, like that. Okay, back to the grass. <laughs> so, let's make some nice colours. And I'm just going to do a whole bunch of this for a long time. <laughs> Just to get that texture in there, like there really is, you know, a ton of grass. And I'm gonna just, every now and then, overstep this little boundary here to try and make a more natural looking separation. But I am gonna put flowers over this part as well, which I think should help quite a lot. Some darker ones in as well, I think. And fill in these little gaps with a stock color too. It's probably a good idea actually to start with the darker ones and then do light over the top so that it looks like you know the shadows underneath and in between the grass. So I guess that's what we're doing now. reason I think that the flat brush can sometimes look better than small brushes like this or something like this is that, as you can see, if you end up pressing hard it gets really quite thick. Like, although it's a small line, it's not really sharp. So I might give it a go with my flat brush as well, just to see what looks better. I'll just finish off this little part first. Because now, you know, I don't have a reference photo to work from like I did the first time. But I do have the photo of my own painting from last time. But it's not quite as, you know, valuable as the actual colours. It's like playing Chinese whispers of paintings. I think it would be quite miraculous if I get through both of these paintings without getting any paint on my sweater. Wish me luck.
Right now I'm just trying to sort of get rid of any of those really light parts like there and also just sort of make the impression of long grass <laughs> which I think is coming along quite well actually so that's working good for me I feel like having that slightly darker base underneath made it look a little better let's just do a few more that sort of cross over that line so it doesn't look quite so stark Maybe a bit much. Hmm. So I think we can get a little bit lighter as we get towards the front. Well, that's pretty much exactly the color of the, <laughs> of the background, so that's not going to work. but I think that's okay. Hmm. Let's do some really dark ones now then. Then I'll do some really light ones in a moment as well. I feel like I need to make sort of little um, clumps as well to sort of make it look a bit more naturally occurring. <laughs> I try and blend a bit of this colour back into the background as well because I didn't really put much of this back there. See, this is the nice thing about acrylics, it's like I can touch this already. <laughs> It's not entirely dry, but it's not like coming off on my hands, which is very nice, especially because I've been working with acrylic paint for the last few days. No, with oil paint. I've been doing an oil painting and it just, it's so difficult not being able to lean on anything. <laughs> so this is nice. <laughs> Just trying to sort of make it look a bit less uniform, really. But also I can come back to this at the end. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. So. Let's swap out for our nice empty one <laughs> and I'm going to start with a really dark colour this time. It's maybe a bit too dark. Yeah, that's definitely too dark. <laughs> Now I've 
I'll go back in and cover those little white bits. Okay, wait, I'm having a moment now. <laughs> a little too late. I think actually what I want to do is pretty much have that dark colour act as a bit of a solid base. So I'm just going to colour in, basically, any of these light parts that are left. I'm going to water it down a bit so it's not completely opaque, but it fills in those gaps a bit. I know I'm undoing all the work that I just did. Don't say anything about it, please. But I think this might look better. And now with this light colour over the top, I'm gonna add back in that texture. Hmm. Because since it's, you know, meant to be far away, I think we don't need to have as much detail. I'm going to pretty broadly do it down here and cover a lot of this lighter green. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go back with the dark now, I think. Is that too dark? Mm, let's try it out. to me now, after painting for this long, might be better to go upwards and down. 
A little embarrassed it took me this long. Okay. We have something. That's for sure. back and mess around with this one now. You know what? Okay, I'm leaving it there. <laughs> I'm done with the grass. I've had enough. So I'm going to do the flowers. Mm. I'm going to do the flowers at the back now and then I'll do the dog and then I'll do flowers and grass at the front. So I've picked some different flowers that I could do for each of the paintings. One of them I'm going to do sort of sunflower -y looking, oh sorry, daisies. And the others I'm going to do sort of dandelion and these little purple flowers. So I think that should be cute. For that I'm going to need a small brush. I'm going to use this little one, it's kind of stubby, but I think it'll make nice little flowers. So I'm going to start with the daisies in this field, so they're going to be really like tiny little baby splotches back here. And this again is one of the things that's sort of uh, helping indicate distance so that I can, you know, alter the size of these flowers the closer they get. So right now they're just going to be little tiny dots. I'm trying to make it look pretty <laughs> random. Now I'm going to head a bit forward and I can make them a little bigger. I'm going to put yellow centers in these eventually, but let's just do all the petals first. Well, that's a bit too much in a line, isn't it? Try and make them look a bit more irregular. Okay, so I've added some flowers. So on this one, I've just done little daisies, and on our other one, I've done some little yellow dandelions and then these little purple guys. <laughs> so now I can finally do the docks. This is the hard part. <laughs> so I have these photos of the docks, but they're not in a field. They're yeah, so like the lighting isn't right on them. So I'm gonna have to improvise a bit. And also they're sort of seated, so I don't know, we'll see how realistic I can get them to look. So this first dog is sort of like a dark brown black dog. So let's mix up a colour. <clears throat> I'm just going to add some brown to my palette. Now let's make that sort of, well, it's very shadowed here and then very sort of greyish brown here because of the light, but I think I'm going to have to change the shadows, so we'll have to improvise a bit. 
I'm going to go with this colour as a sort of base colour. A sort of greyish brown. So let's just start like we did with the grass, just by covering all bases. And then I'll do the detail on top of it. The dog has a harness on. I don't know whether I should leave that in or not. I'll paint over it for now, but I can put it back on later if I decide that's what I want. So it's sort of like leaning forward with its foot out, which is this part. But I think I'll just leave it how it is and then cover up its bottom a bit with the grass. I will do a bit differently is the face so I don't lose the sketch. So I'm just going to do darker black around the ear and under the chin and then around the nose <laughs> just so that I can remember where those are. It's all right that it's not totally neat around the edge because I'm going to fill those in with little like furry locks. <laughs> so now that it's sort of dry up here, I'm going to lock it in. <laughs> looking very spooky still at this time but <laughs> I think once I put in the fur texture it's gonna be much like the grass where it just slowly comes along maybe I need to start using a smaller brush actually <laughs> I fear I've made a mistake with the ear, or I haven't drawn it on right or something. So I'm just going to leave that <laughs> as it is. And I will come back to that. Because I think it goes up. You know what, we'll get to it. I'm going to go back to my small brush, this little one, and start <laughs> putting some details on this blob. So I'm going to start with the lighter fur where the sun hits it and I'm going to do it originally how they've got it in the photo and then see how long it, like where it looks wrong and then change the lighting afterwards just so I can at least get the kind of image of a dog in there first. <laughs> so in the lighter areas it's like a light brown I guess. Let's put that in. Seeing what's gone wrong, the shape of the face is not right. 
but I'll fix that in a mo with the grass. So this is basically the outside of the snout. And then its nose. Uh, I'm going to put in the black parts as well. So this whole ear basically is black. I'm gonna have one really detailed ear and then nothing else. <laughs> That's how we're gonna start this. The white just disappears. Love that. good enough for now. One year. <laughs> now, I think I am going to try and figure out what's going on with this other ear as well while we're here. Because it's going to look really weird right up until we do that. So let's work my way down. I'm going to put this eyeball in so he doesn't look quite so ghostly. Something's not right here. Hang on. So he has these little eye whites, of course. I think I've just painted right over that, and that was the problem. And then there's a lighter patch next to the eye. And around the bottom. <laughs> We're getting somewhere, slowly but surely. And there's sort of like the fur of the eyebrow <laughs> above. stick with that for now. And let's try and figure out where the other eye goes. Because <laughs> I haven't drawn that one on. I think it's this little bubble that I've left here. Alright. 
<laughs> I fixed the ear and the general face. Now it's looking a lot better and I'm feeling better. So let's try and tackle a little nose and then we can do the body. So maybe some lighter fur first. Um, it's like a little highlight almost on top of the nose, but it's all sort of brown fur under here. So let's make that first. Hmm. Okay. That's sort of brown here. There are little tufts of hair sort of sticking up here. And then you don't really see the nose, you can just kind of see some nostril holes, so let's put those in. Let's do one here, one there, <laughs> looking very pig. And you can see a highlight on top of the nose. Sort of there. Oh, that's a bit too much of a highlight actually. Let's dampen that down a bit. Oh, why is that yellow? Stop. There we go. And I think we need some lighter fur again. So now I'm going to try and put in a bit of that fur texture. Where there's none really. This is the problem with it being very sort of black and white dark shadows. So you kind of lose a lot of the details. Which makes it quite difficult to see what's going on. But I mean hopefully the people looking at this painting know what their dog looks like so they'll be able to sort of see what's happening. Okay, I think that's enough for the little head at the moment. Now let's get on the body. So I'll do the dark parts first. So that's the little foot at the front here. And then some fur here. And under the chin. All the way up to the ear actually, like over here. And I think I will put the harness in, but I'll do that at the end. That's right here in the middle, basically. So then there's the shape of the leg, like this. I'm just gonna dot some darker parts about because you sort of see them under the fur a bit. Let's do some of the lighter bits. So I'm going to get that brown again. And start over here. It's 
even lighter really, but I'm just going to do a sort of base for it. Try and make the edge look a bit fuzzy. Just thinning it down a little bit of water to do that. some sort of curls. So his hair is sort of coming over the dark part. Okay, then let's do the light, lightest part. Highlights on top of this. Okay, so got some fur on there now. I'm just going to put in the harness, which is just white really. And it's going across here. And down into the fur and you can't see it there, then up here. Okay, but now we have the issue of, this is a very dark dog on a light background and it sticks out like a sore thumb and the grass will help that a bit but it's still looking too shadowy for such a light area so I think it's time to start trying to color correct a little. So there would be shadow sort of under the chin that makes sense but I'm gonna try and lighten up the face a bit because I think that would not really be so dark. So I'm kind of just going with where I think there's the, <laughs> the direction that the fur goes in. And I hope that that's correct. I think it's grass time. And I'm gonna start by adding more shadows around the dog because that I'm hoping will also help blend it in a little. So I'm mixing up a dark color and we can just start by shading directly. I'm gonna cover up a bit of the bottom of the dog as well. Just where I'm going to put some grass to make it a bit easier. So let's do a bit of shadow around here and a bit around here as well. I think that already actually looks better, doesn't it? Just sort of places the dog in the environment a bit more. Mm, much better. Okay, so now I can get started on the... Now I can start on the grass that's going like over it. Although maybe I should wait for that to dry first. Should I? I'm just going to sort of flick out these parts a bit. Okay. 
I'm gonna wait for that to dry before I put on the last finishing grass touches. And in the meantime, let's do our other dog. Now this one I think is gonna be the more difficult one. Just because of the cut off of the dog, like I said. But let's just draw her in as is first. So it's like a beige and white dog with a little walnut on its head. So walnut included, we'll do it. Let's start with the white parts. I'm gonna make them very slightly beigey just so that I can see it better really. So, oh, that's way too beige. But that colour does come up, so let's just put that where it is. <laughs> this dog's body is kind of this colour. around its mouth, its little legs, some of the hairs, okay, actually I'm gonna do the dark first then, might as well. So it's a sort of honeyish brown. around the eye. Around both eyes. And the head where the walnut is. <laughs> so it's quite dark around the actual eye. But I think I'll just try and get the actual sort of eyeball in first. Bear with me while it looks like a demon. Okay, so we've got eyes and a nose now. Things are looking up. We've got somewhere to work from <laughs> at least. So let's try and make more of this light honey coloured brown. It's a lot of that. And sort of like coming out from around the eyes and up the eyebrows and on the back of the head here. I think I need to make it look a bit more sandy actually, maybe a bit more white. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to try and do the little fur strokes on the ears here. And it's really difficult because the picture does cut off right here so I can't actually see this part of the dark. I think I might have done it a bit wrong in the drawing and this part green. Should be green. Like that. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit of fur around the nose. This is also all going to be covered with white, basically, soon.
got other pictures of the dog. Seems to have a little brown bit around the mouth and on the body, but it's otherwise quite white. So we'll just stick with that. Try and make some sort of fur looking edge here. And I don't know, should I extend it further down? Maybe a little bit. Just so it makes a bit more sense with the grass. Right, I'm gonna start going with the white, I think. Well, I've still got a bit of brown on my paintbrush. Okay. Just trying to block in a lot more fur, really. I've got some other photos of this dog, which are quite helpful because it's really quite difficult to know where, what color is on this dog. But I'm hoping I'm getting it close enough to the true colorings. I need to do the walnut actually, I forgot about that. So let's mix up a color for that walnut shell. right there on its head. Maybe it needs a bit of shading. There we go. There's our little walnut shell. Try and do a little bit of white hair sort of going over the top of it, like that as well. Okay, I think just a few finishing touches and then that could be this dog finished. looking wrong to me is the sort of shadow under the head, like here. Maybe I need to just work on that a bit. Just need to blend it out somehow. Into the fur. Is that a bit better? Okay, let's just get a bit of texture onto this part of the fur and then I think we're done with the dog and we can work on the grass. Okay, so I think that's my next little dog done. And I'm gonna go back to this one to do the finishing touches of the grass. So let's 
go back to my angled brush and get some green going. So I'm going to start with dark green, I think. have some sort of coming up the side as well. And then let's do some lighter ones. It's already starting to look pretty good. That's cute. Okay. Now I'm just going to do some really light ones and then I reckon we're done. So let's get some more white in there. Do some highlights basically. There's not much of this in the rest of it, is there? Maybe I should put some more around. I feel like maybe I need to blend the dog a little better into the environment. One done. Okay, so with that, I think we might be done. So here are my two little finished cuties. I actually think they turned out quite nicely, and I'm happy to be able to send these off soon. So I hope you enjoyed. joining me for the process of these ones today. I definitely like doing this with company, so I enjoyed it. But hopefully you feel a little bit relaxed or just enjoy the background sound and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye. A huge thank you to all of my patrons who support me and my channel. I really couldn't do it without you. And an especially big thank you to my mid REM cycle tier patrons, Max, Cossicas, and Belly Button. I really, really appreciate you sticking with me all this time. So, I hope that everyone gets a wonderful night's sleep tomorrow, especially you guys. Bye.